Paul, please. Here. 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 And uh, Vice Mayor Muller is uh, ill this evening and not with us, and he's at home watching every moment or westerns. So um, we'll be thinking of him tonight. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Bear with me a second here. Let me catch up to my agenda. Um, the first item on our agenda is um, organizational excellence and uh, to the city manager, we're talking about adopt a park program. We are, this evening we've moved the order of the agenda a little bit um, to my favorite part first. Um, and that is the organizational excellence where we have an opportunity to let you know about some of the behind the scenes work that staff is able to accomplish. Um, things that take a great deal of time and investment or effort, but items that are not often um, here at council. So this evening we actually have some proclamations and presentations about a great program and we thought we'd give you a little bit of background ahead of time. And to do that, Alex Kajiki and the assistant to the city manager is going to present the report. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. This evening I'm presenting on the initial successes of the city's Adopt-a-Park Trail and Beach program. The purpose of the Adopt-a-Park Trail and Beach program is to protect and enhance Half Moon Bay's neighborhood parks, trails, and beaches by involving volunteer groups and individuals to create a well-maintained, litter-free, and attractive environment for the community. In the fall of 2012, the Recreation Committee created a work plan in which one of their goals was to create an Adopt-a-Park program. Over the past year, the Recreation Committee has worked closely with the city staff to develop a comprehensive Adopt-a-Park program and bring it to fruition. Recreation Committee members have been actively recruiting and reaching out to potential volunteer groups and individuals to be part of the program. Furthermore, each adopted park, beach, or trail has a Recreation Committee liaison who works closely with a volunteer group. In total, the city currently has 11 adoptable sites. Volunteers who wish to be part of the program commit to adopt a park for a one year period and volunteer at least once a month. Volunteers can contribute by doing litter pickup and removal, cleanup and removal of graffiti, removing weeds, reporting park hazards, provide new park equipment as approved by the city, and paint and clean park amenities such as benches, playgrounds, structures, barbecues, and buildings. Successes so far. To date, three parks and two beaches have been officially adopted and there are three more groups currently going through the process to adopt additional sites. So far, the program has been popular with many potential volunteer groups showing interest in the program. We have also received positive feedback from the groups who are currently volunteering, especially the schools, about teaching the kids to be good community stewards. Volunteers themselves have been great in recruiting other organizations to volunteer and be part of the program. At this time, I will take you through each of the five adopted sites. So the first site is Surfers Beach, which was adopted by Wilkinson School this past fall. Their first beach cleanup was on Tuesday, October 29th, with approximately 55 students and five teachers participating. They picked up an estimated 60 pounds of trash, and their next, next cleanup is scheduled for next Tuesday, November 26th. The next park is Carter Park, which was adopted by the Half Moon Bay Shakespeare Company. The Half Moon Bay Shakespeare Company averages about three to four people each fourth Saturday of the month. On, Saturday, on the Saturday, October 26th, they cleaned the, the walkway and collected five bags of weeds. They would like to start planting on the hillside to get some ground cover in before the rainy season. Everyone they've encountered while they volunteer have been very grateful for their work. The next, park, the next site is Poplar Beach, which was adopted by Seacrest School. They had their entire class of 23 seventh graders participate in the beach cleanup on Friday, September 27th and picked up approximately five full bags of garbage and one broken bicycle. They were unable to get out to the beach in October. However, they are planning to have two different groups of students go out this month and then continue with the different grade levels participating each month thereafter. The next site is Kehoe Park, which was adopted by the Friends of Half Moon Bay Parks and Recreation. They pay for a landscape contractor to mow the park and pick up litter once a week and provide trimming of shrubs and trees four times a year. 
The next park is Ocean View Park, which was adopted by Bob Tucker. Bob currently volunteers his time at Ocean View Park twice a week to pick up litter. So there are three parks in the process of adoption currently. The first park is Smith Field. There has been high interest from the Half Moon Bay Little League to adopt Smith Field and help out. The next site is MacDutra Park, and MacDutra Park is currently in the planning stages of being redesigned by Kikuchi and Associates and will be adopted by the Beautification Committee. The third site is Poplar Beach, and it's for summertime coverage, and this is by the Coastside Children's Program. And it was Seacrest School who helped pitch the idea to the Coastside Children's Program for that. And there are sites still available for adoption. There's the Frenchman's Creek Park, there's Ocean View Park, Kitty Fernandez Park, Oak Avenue Park, Highway 1 Trail, and the Coastside Trail. I guess at this time, this is my time to pitch and publicize the program. So if there's any volunteer groups or individuals uh, who are interested in adopting uh, any of these sites, applications are available on the city's website. This concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Alex, thank you, and uh, I think this is just really remarkable, the, uh, the way the community has come together to support the parks and the parts of our, of our city and, and working together, and, and even how one group refers to other groups, that's fantastic. Is, any other comments or questions from the council? I think it's great that the community uh, is involved. I know Marina really wanted to really start this program, so it's, it's really great that it, it's taken off. Great. Thank you. And um, with that, I think we can move to the next item. I, I want to um, publicly recognize uh, each of the associations, so I'll go to the, the podium and do, and do so. So uh, what I'll do is I'll ask each uh, representative of each group to come up. Uh, I'd like to give you recognition and a, a, a certificate from the city acknowledging your contributions, um, as well as ask you just to say a, a couple of words about your, your group, your activity, at, or perhaps an upcoming uh, um, event. And the first person I'd like to call up is Mike Thompson from the Seacrest School who adopted Poplar Beach. I'll say thank you. Thank you. Just, and, uh, Thank you very much. A certificate. Thank you. Oh. Oh, sure. Thank you. <laughs> well, this, this has been a great experience for our students. We had our seventh graders, as we heard, uh, begin the year. Um, they actually had the interesting experience of hiking, not just from our school down to Poplar Beach. We were actually out at Wildlife Associates down west of town, or east of town. And so we actually hiked them out after a 24-hour uh, outdoor experience there uh, to Poplar Beach to have a, a lunch and then spent the afternoon picking up, um, again, some very interesting items, including a mini bike uh, broken up. And so we're looking forward to our eighth graders this Friday are actually heading out there for their chance to um, participate this fall. And then our second and fifth graders as well will be heading out in the next couple of weeks. And it's been a great experience, particularly with the seventh graders when they first went out there, just to, to really connect uh, you know, more closely with a resource that they probably use on a regular basis, riding their bikes through, walking through, but to spend some time and actually uh, you know, take some ownership and some responsibility for a, a great community resource. So it's been a phenomenal project for us, and we look forward to getting all of our students out there throughout the year. So thank you. And uh, Mike, I just want to add, if, if you would um, feel comfortable inviting some of your eighth graders to come and give us an update on their work and their findings, that would be really great. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, the next. Uh, of course, I can't see anything. Um, uh, Robert Pickett um, and other members from the Half Moon Bay Shakespeare uh, Company and for Carter Park. Robert, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Well, on behalf of the Half Moon Bay Shakespeare Company, I'd like to thank the City Council and um, the uh, program for us has been um, extremely important as one that um, we're forward looking to eventually be able to produce Shakespeare in the park. So that's our plan to eventually be able to put on a play in the park as well as make it available for other arts organizations throughout the community so that it can be a center and focal point for the performing arts. So um, anyone who'd like to come down and join us, we are there the fourth Saturday of every month 
for two hours from 10 until two. So that means next Saturday we'll be there, weather permitting. And uh, like I said, they mentioned, we are planning to hopefully um, get some plants in on the hillside so that the ground cover can completely fill up the, the sides there before the rainy season starts in full effect. So thank you all, appreciate it. Uh, and the, next I'd like to recognize Bob Tucker, uh, who adopted Ocean View Park. It's Bob. My words are going to be few, but I, th this to me is just my own pleasure, but I, I've been here a resident of Half Moon Bay for about 50 years, so I, I know what's going on, these two kids. But uh, one thing I, ha I have to look back and laugh at is, that's right, Al, you and I are in the Planning Commission, that's right. But years ago, you know, uh, when Dolores was here, the city was in bad shape. And the main street got full of potholes, and the city had no money to fix it. Well, I was a supervisor of Caltrans at the time here in the yard. So I sent a crew down, and we patched Main Street for the city of Half Moon Bay. So the state gave free labor, free help, and mix, but I never did ever get a letter of thank you. But this way, it gives me an honor that I do get this because I am picking up the trash. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. And the last group I'd like to recognize tonight are the, uh, the Friends of Half Moon Bay for Kehoe Park. And I, don't know, I know Eddie is here. Is um, John Kobelson or Ann Bauer also here? John is here. Okay. okay. So I'd uh, like to give a very long speech describing uh, your contributions to the park, no, but thank you very much. Um, thank you on behalf of uh, uh, Friends of Half and Bay Park. Uh, we just, uh, the board is, uh, we're all pleased in, that we can help the community and, you know, take care of our parks. Also, we'd like to expand our, the program and adopt a few more in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, and I, I have to say this is a, there, there are a lot of reasons why um, we live in a great place, and I think this is just another example of a, what makes Half Moon Bay a really fantastic place to live. And just thank you for all the volunteers and the groups that have taken this initiative. Next item, uh, give me a moment, I gotta fire up my. Uh, next item is uh, announcements of community activities and community service. There are a few items to mention. Uh, one, we are excited about waiting because it's the Mavericks uh, invitational waiting period. So we're waiting for the big waves to come in and that's going on now. Um, I want to announce Network at Night is coming up on November 21st and it's the Meet Your Legislators event uh, at Butler Golf. Um, Night of Lights is Friday, December 6th and that is going on. And there is a gingerbread house contest Sunday, December 8th at the Ritz. Just a couple of things. Uh, any other activities uh, to mention, the council? No? Great. And with that, uh, I will ask the city attorney to report out from our closed sessions. Yes, thank you, Mayor Kowalczyk, members of the city council. <clears throat> there were two items on uh, this evening's closed session agenda. Uh, the first pertained to uh, real property negotiations, the parcels being considered uh, 225 South Cabrillo Highway, uh, and 2450 South Cabrillo Highway. Um, council received a report from staff. Uh, there was no reportable action. Those are potential um, real property acquisitions. Uh, the second item was uh, one item of potential litigation, uh, consideration of initiation of litigation. Um, there was one matter discussed and there was no reportable action. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Um, now to city council reports. Uh, council Member Frazier. Thank you. Um, once again, at this time of year, um, the Rotary and Chamber sponsors um, an event where it teaches senior students to um, 
work go in the workforce and the, the finer points of working in the workforce and it's a week long session and we were in Pescadero um, teaching them everything from interview skills, resume writing, um, how to get a job and it's really been very successful. This is about the fifth year we've done this um, and it was expanded the last few years to Pescadero. And myself and assistant Cabrillo Unified School District Superintendent John Corey, we do a, a piece on succeeding in the workplace, kind of um, NHR kind of rules and tips and how to get along. So that was great. The senior class in Pescadero is just wonderful and the kids are, are learning a lot. It's some of the things they just don't teach outside of the regular curriculum. So to all the volunteers for Rotary and Chamber who are a part of this, um, thank you, because this is a great service to our youth in the community. And also um, want to thank the community to coming out to the Friends of the Library book sale this weekend. It was very successful, still tallying up receipts and things, but it looks like we made over $6,000. And that's wonderful because it does go to the many programs that the library does throughout the years. The literacy programs, the storytelling, um, books for children, it's just really wonderful. So thank you very much. And to all of the members that came out to our event Friday night, we started a sip and sort. We um, we're a little creative with getting volunteers to help us sort the books. So um, a little enhancement of wine and cheese worked out and we had some bands and music and it ended up as a wonderful social evening too. Ooh, so shocker. next year, um, help volunteer. It's, it's a great thing to do. So I um, just want to thank the community for all the funds that were raised for the library. Really appreciate it. Great, thank you. Councilmember Alifano. I didn't realize it had been so long since we last got together. So <clears throat> on October 17th, I attended a SAMCAR meeting. It's the uh, San Mateo uh, group of realtors. And uh, they just really wanted to talk about where we are in the city, what's happening, and anything they should be interested or involved in. And obviously we had Pumpkin Festival, and I was very impressed. I thought it was one of the better ones. Um, very well organized, very well run. And then on the 22nd of October, we had a SAM tour with the new SAM general manager. Uh, Rick was there, um, the operations manager, and we toured all the facilities that SAM's responsible for. And it was a real eye-opener. It's one thing to talk about a pump station needing a new motor or a pump. It's another thing to actually go to these sites and see what kind of facilities they have. Um, we definitely have some work to do. And <clears throat> the sad part is, I mean, if you don't invest the money, and you somehow end up with a, a, an equipment failure and a spill, the fines can be millions of dollars. So it, it's, it's difficult to spend the money, but on the other hand, if you're not careful, you can cost the ratepayers millions of dollars. <clears throat> um, on, on the 24th, I had a very interesting dinner over in Redwood City. The Redwood City uh, uh, organization, the police department, has an awards dinner for the police, the fire, and citizens. And my son was a detective in Redwood City and he was getting an award. And we, we got to sit through all the awards and they awarded citizens who had uh, reacted and um, alerted the police about a, a robbery or something happening. And they actually you know, brought these people back and did a recreation on video and then and gave them awards. I thought it was a really interesting event they did. Um, when we had a SAM meeting at the end of October we had a ribbon cutting uh, on the 5th of November for a brand new optometry place we have in Strawflower, half one Bay Optometry. That's nice to see we're getting some businesses like that to save us trips over the hill. And by the way, I don't know if we know about this, but there's a new uh, OBGYN opening on Main Street and Quest Diagnostics. So if you need blood work, x-rays, et cetera, instead of going over the hill again, you're gonna be able to do that thing right here on the coast. That's a big deal. Um, and then um, Sal, the Sheriff's Athletic League, organized a dinner with 12 local kids to show them the proper etiquette of how to sit down and have a dinner um, with adults. You know, who pulls a chair out for the young lady and where do the forks and the knives go? And these kids were a lot of fun. They ranged from about 11 to 17 and they were very appreciative. There was a lot of fun there. Cherise put it together and, uh, and then she made all the kids send us a thank you card, which I thought was very impressive. So uh, it was time well spent. 
Then the next morning, we had the COSIDE Collaborative, which is the after school committee. And we, they talk about all the different activities that are happening on the coast for kids, whether it's library, whether it's SAL activities, boys and girls, anything that's happening in town that's good for the kids. And then uh, on the 8th, I met with the neighbors on Kehoe, and we talked about the issues they're having with the Kehoe Ditch. And it was a very interesting meeting. My presence there was mainly just to listen and understand what's happening. And then that Friday, we met at 3 o'clock, and we toured the homes in the backyards and looked at um, the ditch from each of the backyards, the problems, the erosion, and so forth. So again, it was a real eye-opener. And I think we've got a good dialogue going. Um, then I think last week, uh, Naomi and I met on a GPAC with Alex, the general plan um, AC. Advisory. Advisory Committee, GPAC. And I will tell you, I was a little nervous about um, us getting enough volunteers, but we were pleasantly surprised. We've got some great people signing up, and uh, I think we're going to have a really good committee. And it's so critical that we do a good general plan. And then last night, we had another SAM meeting, and uh, again, the new interim general manager is walking us through a, uh, a relook at the, uh, the capital investment plan, which could easily, over the next few years, reach seven or eight million dollars. So it's really important that we have a really close examination of the best, the best places to spend our money to get the most bang for the dollars and not have any issues with beach bills or anything like that. Very busy couple of weeks there. Thanks, Alan. <clears throat> Got a lot going on. And Council Member Patridge. Okay, I attended the uh, Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee meeting, which is called the BPAC. Uh, the main purpose of our meeting was the scoring and ranking of the TDA Article Three funds. Uh, and this was really the first time in a long time that Half Moon Bay did not submit a project. And most of the cities were very happy that we did not, because we always get a lot of money uh, for our trails, but we did not put any uh, money in this year. But we did approve a recommendation of five projects to CCAG for approval and four planning projects for master uh, planning of the bicycle and pedestrian plans. Every city is supposed to have a master plan of bicycle and pedestrian plans so that cities can uh, plan for those trails and also be eligible for grant money. So we're very fortunate that we do, and that's one of the reasons why we've been very successful in getting money for our, our trails. Um, attended the Congestion Management Environmental Quality Control Meeting. We had a real lengthy uh, conversation on shuttles. Um, we were reviewing our congestion uh, management program, and we are having a problem of getting information from private shuttles of how many people they are shuttling from the businesses. And they're not required to give us that information. So consequently, we are not able to really give an accurate number in our report. So we are working on that because between Genentech and some of the other uh, companies, Marina, Genentech. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we can't get the numbers. So we're working on that. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Ellen. We also re um, heard a report on the progress of San Mateo County Energy Watch. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Half Moon Bay is the only city that hasn't started their integrated climate action planning. Sweet. So we need to do that. Neither has Brisbane. Pardon? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, no, Brisbane started theirs. So we got a chart. And I had to say, we were short people, so we haven't started ours. We had a teleconference with um, Chair, uh, Chairman Jeff G on the airport roundtable. Sorry, I'm coming down with a cold. Uh, thanks, Marina. <clears throat> <laughs> no, I don't want to pass. <clears throat> I will fight through this. You want a break? I uh, heard a report from John Martin, who is the um, airport um, director, 
and they were talking about the major construction project they're going to be having at SFO. And it's going to be starting in the springtime. So for those of you that are traveling, be aware that there is going to be some major um, construction on two of their runways. So um, they did it this year already, and they're going to be continuing it next year. So there will be out a lot of um, information out to the public about that so that when you are traveling, you, you will need to be aware. And it is going to cause an increase in noise in certain cities because of the traffic patterns having to go out from the airport. So um, just be aware of that. We had a updates on the FAA uh, port departure and analysis of the oceanic arrivals over at Woodside VOR. We are still working really hard and diligently trying to decrease the noise um, over Woodside and Brisbane. And um, it's very difficult to do um, because you're competing for airspace between Oakland and um, San Francisco Airport. And the FAA controls all of that. We don't, none of the airports control where the planes go. So we are um, in constant contact with um, Congresswoman Spear in uh, issue to try and continue working on, on all the, um, the routes and stuffs. But it's starting to get a little bit better, but uh, the cities are still complaining. We have um, updated our, our website. It's a little bit more user friendly. So if you go to the airport roundtable website, it is much friendlier. Even I can do it now, so um, it, it, it really makes it really simple. So I attended the uh, Transportation Authority meeting. Uh, we approved mm -hmm. our 2014 Board of Directors meeting calendar. We accepted the statement of revenues and expenditures for the fiscal year ending uh, June 2013. Accepted the quarterly investment report. Authorized allocation of five million three hundred thousand dollars of measure a funds for grade separation program and authorized the allocation of two hundred forty thousand dollars for design review for the south city uh, Caltra caltrain station we heard a report but we didn't take any formal action on the dumbarton rail measure two funding their board did not have a quorum so we could not approve or disapprove that funding then I attended uh, two of the Kabul Unified Measure S Citizens Oversight Committee meeting, and I did uh, join uh, Marina in sorting library books on um, Friday along with our city manager. So that was really a lot of fun, and I've never seen people sort through books so fast in my life. Thank you. So uh, for our audience and folks viewing uh, from home or online, I think this is a really great example. We're even one council member short tonight. This is a really great example of uh, the type of activities and how the city of Hefferman Bay is represented in other organizations around the county, around the state, uh, and, and the activities of this council. And I just, it's just really noteworthy hearing all, all the things that, that everybody's doing. I have a couple things to mention. Um, one, uh, I want to acknowledge tonight's uh, 10th anniversary of. Uh, Councilmember Frazier being on the council, that's, it's a, I got, it's a, she's, a, <laughs> it's a, it's a noteworthy event, so congratulations. Um, the, a couple things are already mentioned, but the, the Pumpkin Festival this year, I think it, might, it was the best yet, it was just fantastic, lots of people, everybody happy, no, no big issues, so, um, uh, just, uh, as always, a, a pinnacle event for our community. Um, I've been collaborating and working with the Half Bay Chamber of Commerce uh, um, on the topic of economic development, and we'll be getting some report outs from that in the coming weeks. You can look, look for that. Um, uh, Alan commented on the ribbon cutting for uh, Dr. Uh, Nida Moshasha, who is the optometrist. Um, actually, that is, yeah, that already happened, yeah. Uh, that happened on November 5th. And then um, an update on we're recruiting a new general manager for SAM, the Sewer Authority Midcoast. Um, and we've, uh, that's, that committee's been meeting and we have resumes in hand. We've got, I think we received just under, just under 20 applications. We have resumes in hand um, and we're screening them and we're arranging for the next level of interviews. Of course, we have an interim general manager in place 
who is uh, an expert and is just a pro um, and doing a wonderful job. And in the meantime, uh, the committee continues to meet to recruit uh, the full-time general manager for the sewer authority. Um, the uh, uh, Alan and myself, the interim general manager, and some SAM staff toured our SAM facilities. Um, and that was very informative. Um, it's very familiar with, with the facilities, but really we spent hours and hours going from uh, pump station to pump station to pump station. Uh, and this is the glamour of being on the city council is, is touring, touring the sewer authority uh, assets and facilities. But let me tell you how important it is. I mean, I think, well, I'm not going to tell you, just use your imagination. It's pretty darn important. Um, <laughs> so, but uh, the big takeaway is that there are some, some maintenance needs that we need to attend to, um, and, and we need to do so in a smart way. And so at our most recent SAM meeting, Sewer, Sewer Authority meeting, we talked about the SAM SAM, so the Sewer Authority Strategic Asset Management. Uh, and it's, it's a, a concept of taking engineering principles to uh, uh, applying uh, probability of, of there being an incident and the negative impact of, of an incident and collaborate, putting those two components together to determine which things we should address first. We can't just obviously always replace, 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 have things new. It's a strategic maintenance program. But there are pumps that are aging. There are um, you know, the, the pipes that need replacing. There are all these kinds of things. And, and uh, you know, we have this asset is worth tens and tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, and we need to, uh, to maintain it. So we're taking a strategic approach to that, and that's um, something that our interim GM brought to the table and that we're uh, embracing as an important concept. Um, I think those, those are the, the key things that I participated in since uh, our last council meeting. And with that, I turn it over to uh, the city manager for updates. Thank you, Mayor Qualchuk. I have a number of different um, updates tonight. I would actually like to start with some bittersweet news, and the bitter part is that Lieutenant Lisa Williams, who's been instrumental in transitioning our law enforcement services to the county sheriff, um, is being reassigned to a different um, position within the county sheriff's office. Uh, but the good news is, is that Lieutenant John Muncie will be joining us. This will be happening in January. Um, and Lieutenant Muncie not only went to school um, in his early childhood in Half Moon Bay, but has a lot of terrific professional experience that's directly relevant to working in Half Moon Bay. So I would like Lieutenant Elisa Williams to formally introduce Lieutenant Muncie. Good evening, Mayor Qualchuk, Council Members. I'd like to introduce tonight uh, Lieutenant John Muncie, uh, who has been selected to assume command of the Coastside Patrol Bureau and Law Enforcement Services for the City of Half Moon Bay. Lieutenant Muncie has extensive operational experience, including managing critical incidents and tactical operations. He has experience in dealing with gangs and gang prevention initiatives. He has a bachelor's degree in psychology and a master's degree in public administration. Lieutenant Muncie's most recent assignment is with the Nar county's Narcotic Task Force, which is a joint effort between law enforcement agencies countywide. Lieutenant Muncie is calm, thoughtful in his decision making, and brings creative solutions to solving often comp complex problems. Sheriff Monks recognizes the importance of community policing and outreach, and for the past three years, efforts have been concentrated on bringing staff to the coast side who have connections to the coast side in order to build trust and credibility. Lieutenant Muncie has just such a connection in that he spent a good deal of his childhood growing up here on the coast side and in Half Moon Bay. He attended Hatch Elementary, El Granada Elementary, and Cunha Middle School. Lieutenant Muncie is well respected by his peers and his staff for his leadership and thoughtfulness. And I think uh, the world of Lieutenant Muncie, and I think you'll be happy with his service. I just want to say thank you for having me tonight. <clears throat> Thank the city manager for selecting me and just saying I'm really looking forward to coming back and being a part of this community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I, I don't want to set the bar too high, but um, and I, I don't have to because Lieutenant Williams set the bar very high already. Um, and so we're sorry to see you move on, but we're happy for your, your new opportunities. But uh, welcome to the coast and uh, look forward to working with you. Thank you. Uh, Marina, please. And just wanted to thank Lieutenant Williams for her leadership and all that she's done for us over here. We really do appreciate it. And Vice Mayor Muller wanted to send his congratulations to you as well. She'll again be here through the rest of the calendar year and you will have another opportunity to thank her on December the 17th. Okay, then I'll hold my thanks, but thank you.
Welcome, John. I think I remember you in elementary school. So in continuing with the rest of my updates tonight, um, another item that I wanted to respond to was um, the sidewalk ordinance. I know there's been a lot of concern about this. There's been a great deal of publicity about the sidewalks in Half Moon Bay. And just wanted to bring folks up to date on a couple of things, um, some past history and then some future things that are going to happen. Um, it was 102 years ago, actually, that the state of California um, made property owners responsible for maintaining their sidewalks. It was in 1911, the California Street and Highway Code 5610 um, was enacted. And that um, places the burden of maintaining sidewalks, including trees that are adjacent to property on property owners. Um, they define what that is. It includes parking strips, any um, retaining walls that protect sidewalks, curbs, that kind of thing. Um, and if the, it allows the cities um, to charge the property owner if the property owner doesn't maintain them and the city has to do the maintenance on their behalf. We would like to um, further give some information um, about this at a workshop or some similar venue um, in 2014 when we can fully explain all these details and respond to a lot of the questions and the comments that we've heard um, and try and put together maybe some panel of experts or something that can come and give better information. So we will be bringing that back um, in 2014. The next item is bringing everyone up to um, date on the street resurfacing program. And I actually have, I have a lot of information to share, but I'm realizing that it's such fabulous information that it's going to become an organizational excellence item that Mo doesn't know about yet. Um, <laughs> and um, just briefly, we are um, just about finished. We have a little bit of, as of last week, we had a little bit of striping left to do um, for our 2013 street resurfacing program. And we were able to actually maintain nine miles of streets, which is almost a third of the streets in the city this year. And that was primarily because um, we had over a million dollars to spend on the program. About 500,000 of that is from Measure J. So that went a long way. Um, and we'll actually be bringing a lot, some um, more numbers and other information to you about how important it is to um, continue this to make sure we do cost-effective street maintenance. Um, and then I also wanted to touch on the fact um, about what uh, Councilmember Alifano mentioned. Um, applications are open for GPAC, and we are accepting those through December the 2nd, I believe. Um, and so would encourage folks to apply. This is the General Plan Advisory Committee, which is the citizens group that's going to help inform the Planning Commission and the City Council about what things we need to address in our general plan. And lastly, I wanted to call your attention to some flyers that are over on the table, um, and it's about a planning and permitting workshop that our planning manager, Bruce Ambo, has worked hard to put together with the other folks that, that issue permits in town, including um, the building department, the water district, and CAL FIRE. And, um, some, I really would encourage people to go. The workshop is going to be on December the 5th at 2 p.m. This is targeted for people who, it's, who, who their business is somehow affected by it, other contractors that use the permitting process frequently, or realtors that need to help their clients, that kind of thing, um, which is why we set the date and the time that we did. And I think it's going to be a great opportunity for people to um, ask questions, understand the process, and um, we're actually, you really should come because we're going to be unveiling some new things and some new information, like a new form. And I know that a new form sounds very, yes, bureaucratic and, and, and boring, but it is, <laughs> it is uh, we have redesigned some um, things to try and make it um, simpler and easier to do. So I would encourage people to, again, to come on December 5th at 2 p.m. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. And remember to press hard on the new forms we make. Three <laughs> copies. <triplicate>. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, Naomi. I, I just want to make a comment on the um, Measure J, the street resurfacing project. And I just want to thank Mo, um, especially on Kelly Avenue, the uh, adjustment they made and how really well it came out. And uh, I just want to say that, you know, working with the residents and thinking it, it, it really panned out. Um, Marina and I went down and uh, looked at it and stuff, so I really appreciate that. Great, thank you. Thank you, and I, I concur, it was very successful. Um, next uh, 
topic is the public forum. I've got two cards. Anybody wishes to speak, please complete a card and give it to our city clerk. Uh, the first is Deborah Hawk. Hello, and thank you very much for having me here. Um, my issue, in short, is the zoning of 250 San Mateo Road. Um, I've spoke to Alan before about this, and it's really become a, a very, very large health hazard for us who live there. We are a small community, and um, the permits that Mr. Andrini was given, he's not abiding by the rules, and it really is creating a very large health impact upon us. I Lamont Mack, the code enforcement officer, does have the information as submitted, and he came out and took pictures. And I would really, really be appreciative if um, the city could take a look at rezoning us. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Um, next is uh, George Mutif. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, George Mutif, 408 Redondo Beach Road. At the last council meeting, I commented um, about a uh, what I feel is a health and safety issue in Half and Bay, and that would be the coyote population coming in off the hills and uh, living in the in the flats here. Um, I've lost some more cats along the way since then, and uh, I'm doing my best to try to stop that. But as I mentioned before, and I, I don't know, maybe I maybe I just didn't present it properly, but um, I'm looking for some sort of help. You know, I called the county, called the state, called the feds, talked to the game wardens, and they're all real sympathetic, but you know, basically it seems as though everybody's scared of their own shadow and they won't come out and do anything about it. So I guess my last recourse, which probably should have been my first recourse, would be to talk to the city about it because this is a city issue, it is a health and safety issue, and it is really, really, really bad. And when I brought it up the last time, I saw a couple of heads nodding, so I know that a couple of you at least are aware of it. Um, and it's been going on for years, but it, it's never come to this, never come to this uh, level. It seems to get worse every year, but now I'm having them on, on our property, I'd say over the last three months, probably an average of two to three times a week, um, you know, it, 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 uh, aside from trying to protect your property, you know, getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, I mean, as soon as you open the door, they hear it. They're very smart critters. Um, most of you, if not all of you, are familiar with the property, and you know there's really no choke point there, so that I can't trap them, um, which really doesn't leave me a lot of positive alternatives. Uh, I haven't heard anything from the city since I said something last time. I really would appreciate it if it means I have to come into the city or call or if I can get a call back or if there's some way that we can work on this. Uh, it's not just my issue. They started on the south end of town and wiped out all the cats down at Kenyatta Cove, but you may be aware that about three or four weeks ago, uh, a very young, healthy young man was attacked by coyotes, damn near killed. Um, although attacks on adult males is not frequent, um, attacks on children are much more frequent. And when the cats and dogs run out, guess what's next? So we really do need to take a look at this. Um, and I think it's better that we do it now than after something bad happens. Thank you, aside from my cats. Thank you. Uh, George, thank you for your comments. And uh, 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 just a quick question. Did you, have you chatted with the Humane Society about this? Yeah. You have, okay. Okay. All right, then we'll, I'll follow up on that. Thank you. Thank you. And next is the uh, consent calendar. Are there any items to discuss or poll? Hearing none, I want to poll number seven, and we can discuss that at the end. So with that, any discussion or a motion on the consent calendar except number seven? I would make a motion that we accept uh, consent calendar items one through 10, pulling seven to be moved to the end of the uh, agenda tonight. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
Thank you. Moving on to item number 11, public hearing to consider proposed amendments to the master fee schedule. Thank you, Mayor Qualchuk. Tonight, our finance director, Jan Cook, will present the staff report for both, um, well, for this item. Good evening, Mayor Qualchuk and city council members. Tonight, I'm going to be um, going through a number of master fee schedule updates, mainly for changes to ordinances, cost of services, and to further clarify fees and descriptions within the report itself. So I'm just going to start through each of those. First is taxi cab licensing. We're going to be removing that fee because that no longer is applicable to us um, given um, the changes in the Muni code. The second is a lost, lost citation fee. We're going to be removing that. Is not, that is not something that it, uh, we currently um, enforce, and it's also consistent with other agencies and other cities. The third is an overhead fee of 20% administration on planning fees and other areas. And this is being removed due to changes in the citywide organization and our cost structure that has changed significantly over time. And so um, we'll be removing this fee and um, at a later time reevaluating what that overhead cost rate should be and bringing that back um, in the future. The, third, the fourth one is an entitlement fee. This is a description change only. And it really just says that where the city is an applicant, that it, it has no appeal fee for um, entitlement fees. The fifth one is an entitlement administrative review miscellaneous. This is a title change. Uh, one, of the, one of the areas that we've had feedback on is that customers would like to see uh, the planning fee rate clearly stated on the fee schedule. And so we're, we're just renaming this to be more clear on that. The sixth item is an administration fee for sewer connections. And this is actually a replacement. And this was based on a muni code change that happened last year. We're just updating the, the schedule for that, for that change. And then the last one is we're, we're um, updating our staff research fees for the cost, uh, hourly costs for our current staffing positions. So with the changes that we've had, we've added those staff positions onto the, onto the list. Those are all the changes that we're making. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Great, any discussion or questions? Then I close the hearing. Thank you. Do we need a motion? Yes, we do. I'll Please. make a motion to adopt the resolution approving City of Half Moon Bay master fee schedule. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item number 12, um, city initiated general plan amendment updating the circulation element. So this evening, we are going to present to you the culmination of many months of work. And um, tonight, Bruce Ambo, our planning manager, as well as Jill Ikes, who's been the project manager for the circulation element update, um, are going to present the staff report. Thank you, Laura, and Tara Qualchek and council members. Um, we're here tonight to present uh, the circulation element, as uh, the city manager indicated. To my right, I'd like to introduce you to the project team. I have uh, Jill Ekes, who's our project manager. Uh, sitting all the way uh, directly behind us, we have Audrey Darnell, who's our environmental um, manager. And then we have uh, Bill Loudon, who's our traffic engineer. That's the team that formulated uh, the plan before you. I thought it'd be helpful to go over a little background on the presentation today. Um, we're gonna give you a little background and context uh, Jill's going to discuss the community engagement process and uh, some of the highlights in the circulation uh, element components. It'll come back to me to go over some of the topics that the Planning Commission uh, considered and uh, addressed. And then Jill's going to speak more on uh, the environmental highlights. Um, but I, just for a background perspective, the general plan is one of seven elements uh, that are mandated in state law. It's important to point out uh, that this, this general, the circulation element general plan amendment is consistent with the local coastal plan land use plan, but, it's a, but it is not part of the local coastal plan, so I want to distinguish that. 
Uh, that's a separate total document. Um, and I'd also like to emphasize that the uh, majority of the technical studies for the circulation element were founded in the Highway 1 uh, Traffic Safety and Congestion and Mitigation Plan. Uh, that was a process, as you may recall, went on for a couple of years. I'm going to give it back to Jill. She's going to cover some of the community engagement process and then also some of the technical components with the plan. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Kolchak and members of the City Council. I'm happy to be here presenting some highlights of Half Moon Bay's updated circulation element. Um, first up is the community engagement process, and that started about a year ago now with a very well-attended open house over in your uh, Department of Operations, um, just in the building next door. Uh, we had about 40 folks come and um, study maps and all the different modes in the city, and they gave the consultant team and the staff there just a great amount of input. So that was a really good uh, first step with that. Um, we were able to then go back with um, a summary of that to the Planning Commission in February, and uh, the Commission helped us to uh, really um, refine that input a bit and gave us some priorities to work on. Um, so that was uh, kind of the pre-planning part of the, the process, and then the last two sessions that we've had were public hearings before the Planning Commission. There was a um, hearing on September 20, I think it was the 4th, and then we continued in on to October 8th where they made their recommendation to you um, to adopt the document that um, was given to you a couple weeks ago. And then what did all that input do? So this circulation element is uh, really, we distilled it into three primary themes, safety, multimodal mobility, and connectivity. Those three themes really informed the drafting of the element, the, um, the setting of goals, policies, implementing actions, and identification of supportive projects um, for all the modes that were um, primarily studied for the city. Uh, they include, of course, auto, uh, pedestrian, bicycles, transit, um, also emergency access, and a number of other special um, areas that are rather unique to Half Moon Bay, such as um, scenic routes and other kinds of modes of circulation. So from that, I just was going to highlight, um, you'll see this list here of a, a number of topics um, that there's a new policy or fairly significantly um, a kind of advanced policy from what was in the previous uh, 1992 circulation element on um, many topics. Complete streets is one that I just wanted to um, note verbally a bit because it was a year ago that I believe this, the city engineer uh, Mo brought to you a complete streets policy and a resolution that the council adopted. And that's been put into your circulation element update and policy and actions follow from that. Another couple that I'd like to make note of that are really new and different for your, um, your plan uh, greener vehicular transportation is something that um, Bruce gave us some input from uh, the Planning Commission and from his own experience, and we went out and took a look at that as evolving uh, technologies are coming forward. Um, obviously, uh, supporting electric cars is one side of that, but there, there can be other um, aspects to it. Greener streets may sound a little bit strange. That's uh, the idea there is it could be multifold. So for example, streets that have natural drainage systems, um, sidewalks that drain into a parking strip instead of a monolithic carbon gutter format, um, shade tree parking in asphalt parking lots to, be, uh, to really be planted for reduction of heat island effect in addition to attractiveness or, or just having a handsome landscape plan. And um, we'll be happy to talk about more of those, but I'm, I think um, you get the gist of what's in your element. And um, Bruce is now going to highlight some additional items that the Planning Commission, in their thoughtful review, um, asked us to go and um, improve or add into the element as well, which is in the document that you received. 
Thanks, Jill. Yeah, some of the other items that the Planning Commission uh, paid uh, special attention to were consideration beyond the city limits. This idea of connectivity and integrating into facilities that are just beyond our border. Uh, transit and school buses, transit stops, uh, the, the safety aspect of that. Facilities maintenance, they talked about that quite a bit with sidewalks and trails, special events with uh, parking agreements and truck traffic. And then this, the kind of the general plan concept of consideration of future flexibility and opportunities. They recognize that this is a dynamic plan and that we need to be flexible and nimble and be able to move on different things as things evolve in the community. Um, I'm gonna give this back to Jill. She's gonna kind of summarize the key uh, elements of the environmental review. All right. So um, we've got just a few quick slides on environmental review, but rest assured that environmental review pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act that we refer to as CEQA has been conducted for this uh, circulation element update. Um, an initial study and mitigated negative declaration were put out for circulation last summer and uh, comments were received during that circulation time and also additional comments were received uh, during the public hearing um, process in September and October with the Planning Commission. Um, the comments were very carefully assessed and they were also compiled into a, a bound document that you received called the response to comments document and we updated it all the way through everything that we had received through the Planning Commission's approval. We have not received any new written comments um, from that time to this hearing um, since it was noticed. So we continue to check. Um, this project has had a maintained website with an email input system and we've, we've checked that and Bruce also hasn't received any additional comments. You have all that we are aware of at this point. Um, so then uh, a couple things about those comments. They, they helped inform us and we actually uh, made some revisions to your circulation element because of them and reviewed those carefully with the Planning Commission. We also improved uh, three mitigation measures that were associated with biological resources and strengthened those measures. And then those were incorporated into the mitigation, monitoring, and reporting program. So those are very important um, components to uh, what your city staff needs to do as projects are implemented is following the um, neg negative declaration with that um, monitoring reporting program. In conclusion, with respect to environmental review, the final determination as evaluated by staff, the consultant team, and the planning commission is that they found that all impacts identified would be less than significant with, with uh, the mitigation measures incorporated and as um, provided in your uh, final negative declaration and in the mitigation monitoring and reporting program. I am done. Bruce will provide some concluding thoughts. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, just um, <clears throat> to kind of summarize the, the uh, the, the 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 character of this document it's a it's a, a flexible policy framework uh, that keeps option open options open for us in the future as things evolve uh, the the circulation element is um, is is intended to be respective of the scale uh, the size and the special character of the community and if you read through those policies that's what emerges that we we grasp that and, and embrace them. And it's also uh, this, this aspect of consistency. We will, um, if, as you know, we will be doing a general plan update after following this and then a local coastal plan update. But there will be, uh, at the conclusion of that, we will do another review of the circulation element to ensure that those policies and plans are consistent at that time with whatever document is developed in the future. Uh, so, for the rest of the hearing, we're recommending you go ahead, if you have any questions, go ahead and, and uh, we'd be happy to take them. Uh, we're suggesting we open up the public hearing, the council open up the hearing, deliberate and take action. And our recommendation is actually to adopt the mitigated negative declaration and uh, adopt the updated circulation element. And we've got a, rec a resolution that's uh, recommended for your adoption. 
And I, as well as the rest of the team, would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Great, thank you. Um, so I have two blue cards. So we hear from the public at this point? Oh. Opening the public hearing. I have two blue cards, shall we hear from the public? And then, um, and then we'll ask questions. So first is uh, Jerry Steinberg. Jerry? These are just some comments on this uh, circulation element. <clears throat> There's no doubt it was uh, well-intentioned and good concepts, and it's articulated very well. The overall look at pedestrian, bicycle, auto-integrated approach makes for a good plan. Of interest was the connectivity of neighborhoods and the lessening of the use of Highway 1 by the many intersecting subdivisions using Highway 1 as the only connecting route. It takes getting to about three quarters through the document to have any questions arise. The chart indicating the peak hour intersection levels Existing appears open to question for existing Saturday level at where Terrace Avenue. Was the data taken during an event on the coast or before the shortcut path to the high school was closed? The guest at data for 2035 appears also to be premature as the Pacific Ridge development has not started uh, after receiving approval in 2008 and with a predicted low growth rate for the coast may not be viable in the near future. The proposed funding grant for several of the improvements along Highway 1 uh, were for items that both Caltrans and the Coastal Commission has raised many issues, and the original hastily put together CDP has been withdrawn by the city. Caltrans has asked for more data to justify a stoplight at Terrace. It would be helpful if the city engineering department would work on engineering projects, concepts, and design, and have others pursue the obtaining of grants for ag from agencies such as the San Mateo Authority, uh, Transit Authority. It would also make it appear to be not, be not self-serving the interest of our contracted engineers firm. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, next is uh, George Mutif. Again, George Mutif for Redondo Beach Road, Half Moon Bay. Um, this process has come a long way. I remember, uh, what, it may be 50, 60 feet away. In the sunroom, this um, circulation element was introduced uh, by the city engineer with, at Pat Webb's first uh, planning director's meeting at the time she was interim planning director. So a lot of eyeballs have looked at this. A lot of people have spoken to it. Um, and I'm glad to, to see that and to hear it. Um, I attended most of the meetings, pretty much all of them, uh, including the very first one that the city initiated with the little stickums and the boards and stuff, and and um, it was interesting. I had uh, actually had a little bit of fun, um, but I remember putting some comments in, and I remember other people putting comments in. In fact, if if memory serves me. One of the council members put a comment on that board that was almost identical to mine, and it was about Foothill Boulevard. Um, I don't see anything really specific about Foothill. You want circulation? Put Foothill in. And instead of bringing it out Terrace, bring it out Bayview, which is a better intersection. And I seem to recall we had in 2006 a draft EIR from Lanto. I want to say it cost over half a million dollars. Actually, I don't want to say that. It was their money, but I believe that's what it was. Um, and it took a lot of time. And I remember at the time Ms. Patridge was mayor, and we came in, and the place was packed. And the very first thing that she did was say, well, guess what? We're not going to put a light at Terrace. And the reason was the draft EIR had a wetland that prohibited it. And yet I still see stoplights at Terrace, and I just don't get it. Um, it's too close to Main Street to widen uh, to put a light there. Um, Bayview is a much better location. Foothill is a much better idea. I get traffic, of course, you know I live on the south side of town. And I get traffic coming into the city at 5, 5.30 in the evening, sometimes even earlier. Um, and it'll stretch for an hour or two. 
that even surpasses goes south of James Ford. I mean, it's ridiculous. It really is bad. And I know you know this. You don't need me to tell you this. But I continue to wonder why we don't hear more or see more about Foothill. Uh, it seems it would solve two issues with one stone. It would relieve that light at Terrace and move it up to Bayview. Um, and we would have a circulation where 75% of the traffic goes north on Highway 1 every single workday evening. Uh, it's only going to get more as time goes on because there's more room for development up there than there is here. And it, it would, Foothill would eliminate the intersection of Main and 92 and 1 and 92 uh, would eliminate most of the traffic. I, I don't understand why we don't have that. I sure wish you guys would, would really kind of push a little harder. And I also understand that the element is not circulation element and it's not terribly specific and you know how I am about specifics. Um, and I understand it gives you wiggle room and that's a good thing because you never know what's going to happen over time. But the three concerns that I would have would be Foothill, the light at Terrace, and I don't recall seeing a heck of a lot of mention about Main Street and Cir uh, Main Street uh, Bridge and certainly that is also a very strong part of our circulation element. If it's not, it should be. Thank you. Thank you, George. Um, Comments, questions from the council? If there are no further speakers, I would recommend you close the public hearing. So close, thank you. Um, comments, questions from the council? I, I do. I have some comments in regards to um, Foothill Boulevard. Um, I totally agree that we need a um, parallel road um, to Highway 1. It's not that. This council has not thought about it. It has um, kind of been taken out of our control as far as um, Foothill Boulevard going through. So, I mean, uh, we did have an assessment district. When that project was killed, the assessment district was killed also. All the money was returned. So it's a matter of, uh, of starting all over and getting funding. It's also a matter of not considering Baywood um, as one of the points simply because Camarillo properties, we, uh, the city or as property owners, we have not decided what we're going to do with that property. So uh, I think having the flexibility as uh, the planning director has indicated, I think it's something that we can still be looked at. It's not dead in the world because um, this is not built into concrete. So I think we need to look at this as kind of like a guideline um, and not something that's saying, OK, this is exactly what we're going to be doing. Um, but I totally agree that whether it's Foothill or whatever, we need to have a parallel road to Highway 1. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, uh, if we're going to have highways up in the sky or what. But, um, you know, like on, uh, what was that, Flintstone? No, was it not Flintstone? Jetsons. Remember how you went around the air? But uh, I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. I mean, that's, that's a, a tremendous challenge. So, um, but I agree. We need a parallel road. And I was telling the city manager this weekend was probably the worst weekend I have seen traffic going north on Highway 1. In fact, I was so stunned, I got, I turned, made a U-turn, went in the parking lot, and I watched all the traffic go through north. So I don't know if it's the wonderful sign that we have now on Highway 92 that says go north. It doesn't say go north. It says go see Princeton Harbor. It says go see Princeton. No, it doesn't. It says both. So anyway, I'm not sure that people are tired of going to our main street and now going north. I'm just making a joke of it, but it's absolutely true. I mean, so, you know, if somebody else can come up with some other parallel road, I mean, we really wanted the frontage road on, in front of Castle Del Mar to be really left as one of the roads. Because for emergencies, we did have to use that one year when there was a really serious accident, and that was the only way people could get north was on, on Castle de Mar Road. So um, I'm not sure what the plan is. So I'll, I'll make a comment on that. The, uh, not about the sign, though, but about, <laughs> um, but, but about uh, uh, the need, for, uh, the flexibility in the document, which I appreciate, and I think it's there. Um, and I, I was the council member that uh, referenced Foothill uh, at that brainstorm meeting, but really, a, a, 
Uh, oh, sh 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 so I was one of them. Anyway, but, the, but I think a, a better uh, description would be, uh, I think Naomi put it better, in that there's uh, a parallel access. Not, they call it what you will, and maybe it's not what was it previously envisioned as Foothill, but the need for parallel uh, uh, access is, uh, is important. And so I think the flexibility is in there for that, so I concur with that. Other questions, comments? Marina? I, I agree with you. Um, I think this d does allow for some flexibility and appreciate the work the staff did and all of the comments from the community at these workshops. Um, I, I think having the connectivity and uh, looking at improving safe pedestrian access, walkways, um, bikeways is, is critical for us. So I, I'm glad that we've got some flexibility that we can be creative in connecting neighborhoods in safe walkways for people. To the chair, yes, I uh, <clears throat> I echo the comments about uh, an alternative parallel road north. I mean, <clears throat> we lived most of the time south, and you know we're not caught up in that until occasionally we have to go north. But Friday and Saturday night, the traffic was I've never seen it like that outside of Pumpkin Festival, Highway One, Main Street, just bumper to bumper. And they were, and it had nothing to do with the sign, by the way, they were, <laughs> they were all heading north. When they got to 92, yeah. nobody was turning. They were all, they were all going north. crawling. Uh, something must have been happening. I don't know what it was. Um, and the people that, that do live north of town, they really, mornings and evenings, they have a, a mess on their hands. And anything that we can do <clears throat> to improve it, and I know when I talked to the city engineer one time, I said, well, Mo, if you, if you add you know, lanes farther that merge farther north, how does it help? You still have to merge back into one lane at some point. And he said, well, look at the improvements to uh, 92 and Highway 1 and Main Street. In the mornings, it used to be a total disaster. The people coming south couldn't get onto 92, and it was just gridlock. And I thought to myself, well, adding more lanes when you still have to merge down to one, and it's not going to help. It, does. it works. And what happens is the people get more time to merge and to funnel into the one lane, and it keeps traffic moving s smoothly in the mornings. It's, it's helped tremendously. I, I think we've all seen that. So I, I, I think we have a, a real dire need to improve, especially in the evening, the traffic heading north outside of town and try to improve that. As far as stoplights go, uh, the one in Pillar Cetus is amazing. I mean, now you can tell those people in those neighborhoods can cross the highway by, on foot without fear of being run over. They can get on the highway morning and evening without sitting there for hours waiting or, or taking their life in their hands. Um, I just wish, Mo, you could time it a little bit better because it seems like every time somebody pops onto Pillar Cetus, poof, you know, Highway 1 turns red. but in terms of how it's improved those neighborhoods' access, it's amazing. It's critical. And I understand, too, I would like to see a light farther north, but in discussions again with the city engineer, it really ends up involving the, the warrants, if I'm saying that right, the, the, the amount of traffic at a certain point is what Caltrans uses to finally justify where a light goes. So I think we know we're not traffic engineers. We have to rely on our relationship with Caltrans of where lights do go. But clearly, again, as you get north of town, those people in those communities there really have a hard time getting off and on Highway 1. And sometimes I think they just close their eyes and hit the gas pedal. It gets so bad. So I think all these things are going to be helpful to our community moving forward. And again, I echo the same comments. This is a high level document helping us move forward. It's been since, what, 1992? So it's really important. I'm so happy to see the city finally Absolutely. updating all these elements, our general plans getting started. I don't know what this part costs. I know it's not inexpensive. The general plan is just under a million dollars. And it's something that has to happen. So I'm really glad we're doing this. And I thank you to the uh, people that have worked on this. It's, it's a good document. Thank you. So I concur across the board in um, Councilmember Patrick, something to add? 
Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that um, my Sunday reading was the comments and response <laughs> that I, and, and watching the 49ers at the same time. But I want to comment what a great job you people did on making responses to this. And it was very, very uh, uh, well done. And I just want to compliment you for that. So I concur with that. I, I want to acknowledge not just staff, but also planning commission uh, and 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 the public that who contributed at our at our, our, our sessions, all our all our work together. Uh, no small amount of effort went into this document. Uh, not in a, you know, there's a lot of work assembling it, a lot of work contributing to it, uh, and all very valuable. So much appreciated. And if there aren't any other comments, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the general plan amendment to replace the 1992 circulation element with an updated 2013 circulation element. Second. And would that be adopting the resolution that does that and, and that would, has would be, the initial study and mitigated negative declaration? That would be by adopting the resolution based upon the findings contained therein of attachment one with the following initial study and mitigated negative declaration along with the general plan amendment. I would second that. A motion and a second. I would like a roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 And with that, it passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you, everybody. Great job. Moving on to item number 13, uh, adjustments to the annual budget. Jan Cook will be making a return appearance this evening. I'm back. Okay, we have a couple of adjustments that we're proposing for this, this current year to the budget. And a lot of these are one-time uh, expenses that won't be recurring into the, into the future years. Um, the total cost of those is about $625,500. And these will primarily be coming from the unassigned reserves that are available. We have a total reserve balance of about 1.7 million. So this would bring our un, uh, unassigned reserve balance down to about 1.1 million um, once we fund these, these budget amendments. So the first one is, is just a change in the safety side fund pay down amount. We now have a final calculation from CalPERS and um, when we pay off this $175,000 more, the entire liability will be paid off for the safety side fund. This has been a, a, a couple year process for the city and um, this will complete that process. The second is related to city attorney contract services um, and this is um, an amount above and beyond the, the annual contract amount of 65 hours per month and this will be used to support um, key strategies and work related to Main Street Bridge, Kehoe Ditch, and other planning matters for the city. The third is transition costs, um, and this is just simply a budget amendment because of the timing of the labor negotiations in connection with when the budget is, is estimated. And um, it's also uh, related to contracting of planning services. The other one is HR contract services, and this is uh, simply covering um, some uh, recent um, turnover in the staff and supporting some of the HR work that is needed within the city. The other one is the federal interest subsidy reduction, and this is coming from the sequester, the federal budget sequester. We have an 8.7 reduction in our interest subsidy on the Series B bond, and so it requires just a $23,000 um, general fund subsidy to support the debt service into the bond fund. Also, at the time of the budget, when we did um, the budget, we still had the planning. We had not contracted out for planning services, so we're reconfiguring that budget to go from being payroll to contract services, just uh, rearranging the money. And then also we have um, a, a biological study that was also needed at the time of this budget amendment. And then the last one is related to personnel funding. There's no budget impact. Um, however, it is a headcount of one in increase. 
And the reason that it's a, it's a no budget impact is that it's just the timing of open positions and rearranging of the positions. And really the realignment of headcount is coming in a couple different ways. First, we're adding a CIP manager, which will help to support the um, capital project oversight. And then secondly, an admin services officer, which will support the operational strategic projects. And then the third is a finance manager, which will help with key finance deliverables. Um, so again, that's a net incremental headcount of one, um, but there's no budget impact for the year. So to summarize, um, these are all adjustments that for the most part are one time. In, um, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Questions or comments from the council? So, so with the, uh, I have one, with the uh, revised unassigned reserve balance at just over a million dollars, uh, in your estimation, is that an appropriate amount percentage-wise on a percentage basis? Or is that, so that we, are, we, are we required to keep a certain percentage of our funds uh, in reserve? Yes, this is um, the unassigned portion, so the this is above and beyond the amount that's been reserved for that. Got it, got purpose. it, got it. Thank you. Yeah. And with that, do we need a motion? Yes, I would uh, recommend a, ro uh, <laughs> a resolution approving adjustments to the fiscal year 13-14 annual budget of the City of Half Moon Bay. Second. The motion is second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item number 14, Treasurer's Report. I'm back again. <laughs> so this is a report on the, on the Q1 Treasurer's Report. And the purpose of the Treasurer's Report is to provide a, a point in time snapshot of the city's cash and investment position. And the report is prepared quarterly. It's something that we present at, at, uh, as a consent item uh, primarily at City Council. And it provides an open accounting of the city's funds. And it's also another way to cross check against our policies. This item's on business item per request of a council member. Um, this is normally a, just a regularly scheduled item. And all of our investments are in compliance and there's no additional action that we're asking you to take tonight related to this report. As far as the investment objectives of the city, in order of priority, we have safety, liquidity, and return in that order. We also are required to comply with state laws and also our investment policy. There are parameters in, these, in, the, in the state law and our investment policy regarding the types of investments that we can make and the level of investment we can make within those types of investments. Um, every year, the city council adopts an annual investment policy as required by state law. The investment sectors that we're in, uh, that we're invested in are in the San Mateo County pool and LAIF, and a large portion you'll see in, in fiscal agents and then demand deposits and money markets. The San Mateo County pool and the LAIF are liquid investments which provide a lot of flexibility in cash flow in, in helping with our cash flow needs. Most notable in this quarter is the amount that is in the fiscal agent category. The 13.15 million insurance proceeds that the city council decided to use to help pay down the bond program that is included in that amount at this point and is sitting in an irrevocable escrow trust. As far as our investment performance, the portfolio consistently exceeds our one-year treasury note benchmark and our current quarter is at 0.4% versus the 0.1% on a treasury note at this time for the quarter. Whew. Yes. Yes. And with that, um, that summarizes the treasurer's report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you for the report. Um, I was the one that asked for that. Um, and, uh, and the reason I asked for that was, uh, I, Normally it's on consent, but uh, um, we as a city have, uh, uh, we're in better shape than we've been in. 
and we uh, also have just uh, re received uh, the, the funds from the insurance settlement, and I wanted just to be clear of where our investments were uh, and, and that everything was being handled appropriately, and clearly everything is. Um, we are just crushing uh, our returns compared to the one-year treasury note. Um, a, I, I believe if I saw that correctly, that's a, we're like 400 percent higher than the one-year treasury note. 400 percent. So that, that's that's you know, phenomenal. But uh, no, I did want to I, I did want to have this item call out that uh, I, I wanted to have the opportunity to say two, uh, two things. One, that uh, we are uh, especially in light of also Bell California issues. We are uh, doing things the right way. Uh, this is where our money is. Um, I also want to take the opportunity to highlight um, that we, uh, as a city, are in a much better place than we had been. And um, I think this all comes together here. So thank you for that report. Any other questions or comments? I, I thought it was a good idea to do that because it does sh show the community that we are you know, becoming fiscally sound. And it's great to see that. So thanks for all your hard work. We do have two requested actions on this item. I shall make a motion to accept the treasurer's report for the quarter ending September 30th, 2013, and adopt the resolution approving the transfer of fund balance from Fund 55 to Fund 01 and eliminating the city debt service Fund 55 fund from the financial structure of the city of Half Moon Bay. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion no. carries unanimously. Thank you, Jan. Um, coming back to item number seven. Uh, item number seven from the consent agenda. So, um, so I don't know if, sh sh should we introduce the item or shall I say why I pulled it? How do we start? I'll start, well thank you, I'll start. So, uh, so several weeks ago, um, we had uh, Mr. Duffy um, from GSD come and give a presentation on the idea of expanding uh, GSD to be a community services district. And uh, conceptually, that, you know, that is super high level. Like, yeah, what, does, what does that mean? Does that mean more parks, better parks, things for kids to do? I, I, you know, I, I wondered, so I asked the question. Um, uh, what is the vision of this organization? And, the re and, it was and, and I'm very fond of Mr. Duffy, and, and we work well with GSD at SAM, and all, everything's good there, but I, I was very uncomfortable with the answer. Uh, because the answer was, well, we're gonna form the, organ it, 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 and you guys tell me if I heard it wrong, but it sounded like we're gonna form the organization, and then we're gonna set the vision for what we're gonna do. Uh, and I was uncomfortable with that. Um, uh, I, I think that for us to support it, I wanna know what the intent is. And if I understand the, and there's, if there's commitment to the intent, then uh, I can support that intent or not, depending on what that intent is. But um, uh, it wasn't clear to me what that intent was. And did anybody did you recall hearing something other than that, or is that fairly accurate? Fairly accurate. Yeah, accurate. Okay. So, so with that, and the, um, there's a draft letter for consideration. Let me just jump to that. And um, the draft letter states that Heffen Bay fully supports uh, these efforts. Uh, so, so tomorrow there's a LAFCO meeting where this is gonna go in front of LAFCO. Um, and uh, um, there are three conditions in, the, in this letter that, that, are, that was drafted by staff and is very well written, no grammar errors or anything. Uh, and uh, indicating you know, um, the conditions are prior LAFCO approval, et cetera, on a couple items uh, and, and some clarification of the intent. Uh, I feel otherwise. Uh, I think the letter is written as, uh, it says we approve, uh, we support this with these conditions. And I would prefer it written in the opposite, that, that a, as articulated to us, we do not support this project because of the following reasons. And if these reasons are addressed, then I would really welcome enthusiastically approving it. Uh, I, I think it's it's a smarter move for us because it's it's really open ended to me, and and I'm sort of uncomfortable with where it's going to go. Now, anybody who knows me, I mean, you you know, I'm all about whatever we can do for the kids, for the parks, for the community. I'm all about supporting that, um, but I, I'm not a 
comfortable blindly supporting something that uh, can't be articulated or wasn't shared with us what it would be. Um, I think the uh, you know, my my understanding is the intentions are good of of, of GSD and all of these things. Um, however, I, I, I'm uncomfortable st standing behind something that that is um, is just so va very vague. So that that's why I pulled it and I offer that for discussion. And certainly, uh, uh, Alex, if you have any comments uh, or, or perspective, having written this fine letter I'd welcome to hear that too but you can feel free to contribute or not contribute don't don't you don't have to I think you captured it pretty well okay. <laughs> thank you so uh, to the council any comments questions do you concur or disagree well um, I uh, I agree in that we don't fully we fully support the efforts um, to try and provide it but I think in order for us to say what you want us to say that unless they do the following things, it may need to be stronger in those kind of terms. Um, and, I, and I agree, unless we really know that, that this is what they are really going to do to provide park facilities and recreation, I'm not sure about the money. I just want to make sure also that our residents that live in Frenchman's Creek, Miramar, anybody that's serviced by uh, Algonada Sewer, that the city of Half Moon Bay does get money back for those residents for uh, the recreation that they supposedly are going to be having to pay for, and they're paying for it through us also. So, um, I, and we can't get numbers out of it. So I think. Um, if we if they can be more specific to us, I, I would uh, truly uh, appreciate that we can get more information from them. Because right now, I don't want our residents that are in the Algonada Sewer District to be, you know, being charged, and we're not getting money back for that. Yeah, something more specific, because it's they want to form a community services district. So what does that mean? Is it truly providing rec active recreation? Is it acquiring open space lands? Um, just more specificity on exactly what their mission is. And once that becomes clear, I think that's something that one could get behind. And, and the one thing, when uh, Mr. Duffy was here, I said, I'd just like to see a simple financial of A, where are you now? What does Granada get for sewer money? from property tax, how are you spending that? So if you're getting a million dollars and you spend a million on your sewer cost, then tell me in B, what's gonna change? Are you gonna get more money? If you're getting the same million dollars, I don't know how you can divert any of that to any park or recreation activities if currently it's being used for sewers. So I just need to know, I need to understand the financials number one, and then number two, I agree, we need to see mission statements, et cetera. I mean, first is financials, and then it's mission statements, and what are the activities, what are your, what are your goals as, as an organization? So uh, I agree with the mayor. I think this letter needs to be a little bit more, I don't know if the term would be blunt, but w w we'd be willing to consider this proposal if we had a little more information specifically to the points that are shown here. May I suggest potential wording, and we can draft on the fly. I know Alex has a pen ready, so you ready? Okay, you ready? It's good enough, okay. Um, but the city attorney has also drafted something. He's, he's not even here. <laughs> okay, got it. So, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, sorry. Um, but something that reflects um, um, either is we, we can. We don't have to be. Well, we can be blunt and say we do not support it. Which, frankly, as of today, I don't. I'll be clear. As of, as of this moment, I don't because we could not get answers to our questions, and I thought they were pretty simple foundation level questions. Um, so we could be that direct, or we could be more polite and something that uh, city city of Half Moon Bay does not yet support or is prepared to support, which is another way of saying we don't support it yet. Um, either way, I'm good, but I'm happy to hear uh, uh, what uh, staff might suggest. 
Um, one of the possible modifications you might want to consider is to the first paragraph. Um, and um, it would could possibly be modified to say that we support the efforts to provide additional parks and recreational opportunities on the coast side, as is currently written there. And at that point, we would then change it. And we would say, however, at this time, do we, we do not support efforts to reorganize to become a community services. We do not support El Granada or whatever in their efforts unless the following issues are fully addressed. And then we would maintain um, the bullets that are already there. I also hear a suggestion to add a bullet that talks about a financial plan to that list. Um, and then at the very end, we could modify it to say that the city urges LAFCO to consider including um, the foregoing to the to the application. So it'd be a minor mod, be sort of a technical modification at the bottom. So does that meet your needs? It may. Can you try that again? Sorry. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you want the city. The City Council of the City of Half Moon Bay fully supports efforts to provide additional parks and recreation opportunities on the coast side. However, at this time, we do not support efforts to for, we do not support Granada Sanitary District's efforts to reorganize to become a community service district unless the following issues are fully addressed. And then I we got would it. So, um, have those bullets and add a fourth one that talks about the financial plan. Right. And, and, and so does that say that if they address those four things, then we automatically support it? Is that how that's written? No. Okay. Then uh, we'll, and we'll reconsider. Yeah. Then I'm comfortable with that if everybody else is. We can add a line that expressly says we will reconsider it once they address those items, if that makes you I think we should be silent to that. Yeah, silent to that? Yeah. Absolutely. That we will reconsider because they, they need to understand that we are serious about that they need to follow these conditions. Um, because, you know, if, we do, if they don't do it, then we're not going to reconsider. Absolutely. So, so, then, so why would we say we're going to reconsider if they don't follow those? Right. So, so then... I think the wording should be that, but we do, however, we do not support GSD's efforts to reorganize to a community services district because, and that's just, that's the reason why, and then we just leave it flat. So it's a because. I'm wordsmithing from the dais. You are. You are doing that. Um, yeah, it, it would have to come back just to see what it looks like because I personally don't think there should be little pockets. I think if it was a coast side community recreation district, I think that would truly be the way to go. So uh, let's get this defined, see what it is, and make evaluations and assessments. I just want to that remind you that this is uh, letters contemplating uh, being submitted for the LAFCO November 20th meeting. Wow. Yeah. No, okay. So, so they asked us for support, and I think we're saying, for these reasons, we do not support it. Right. right. Okay. And maybe we say at this time. Don't be so wishy-washy, Ellen. Absolutely. Don't uh, be of, of course, it's at this time. Oh, at the present time. <laughs> so. <laughs> do, you want a so we'll make a motion to amend the letter that has been as stated by the city manager. Is that too loose or is that good? That's good. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, thank you very much. And I believe that concludes our city council meeting for today. Thank you to staff. Thank you for our viewers. Thank you for our public for attending. Good evening.